Hi guys, my name is Alan Arvind and I'm a CFA chapter holder and in today's video what I want to be discussing is on the problems with the internal rate of return because remember the internal rate of return assumes that each of these cash flows that you're getting each year is getting reinvested at the IRR rate itself. That's a big assumption and that's an incorrect assumption, right? Because it might so happen that whatever cash flow that you're generating in the business is actually getting reinvested at some other. Maybe you are investing in a fixed deposit. How do you counter that? Not just using a function, but I'll also explain you how to calculate the MIRR function manually. Let's get started. So the IRR is the rate at which NPV becomes zero and it assumes that every cash flow is getting reinvested the IRR. So let's first just calculate the IRR, right? So you understand what we're exactly doing. So just write the IRR formula and select the cash flows. Right. So IRR comes up to be as 13.95, right? Which is assuming that each of these 50, 100, 400 is getting reinvested at 13.95. But in the real world, that's not how exactly things happen, right? Because you have a different financing rate. So you finance the cash flow using a different set of source of capital. And you maybe or maybe not reinvest in the business itself. Maybe you reinvest at let's say 8% is a savings account or a fixed deposit account. Right. So how do you counter this? So first I'm obviously going to show you how this is done manually so that you understand this concept. Right. So first let's understand that what will be the future value of these cash flows if they're getting, getting reinvested at 8% because that is how we want to reinvest that. Right. So nothing but 50 value at year five is what we're going to calculate, right? Which is nothing but the future value formula, formula, right? So present value into one plus the reinvestment rate raised to now number of periods that are pending from year one is nothing but five. So we're going to keep the five as constant and minus one. So basically four years of compounding is going to happen for 50. So basically what we're saying is the value of 50 at year five is 68. And similarly, we can just copy and drag this formula. So value of 600 at year five is going to be raised. I mean, basically the same. So now what we are saying is if we calculate the future value of cash flows at reinvestment rate, right? So I'm going to be very specific is nothing but the summation of all these values, right? There you go. So that's nothing but 1800, right? Whereas the initial investment value, right? So initial investment is what? which is nothing but the negative cash flow or we can also write it as present value of negative initial investment is nothing but 1000 right so let's keep it as negative only at the moment so now what we are saying is if 1000 were to become 1800 in a certain period of time so the equation would be something like this right that it would be 1000 right into 1 plus the mirr rate raised to 5 right and that would equal nothing but 1800.5 that's what we're trying to solve for so if i solve for this it would in next step would be 1 plus mirr raised to 5 sorry 5 and the formula would be 1800 divided by 1000 right if i solve for this further then it would be 1 plus mirr right 1 raised to whatever function we got it in the previous step divided by 1 raised to 5 because 5 if it's on the left hand side if it goes to the right it becomes raised to 1.5 right and in the last step it's going to be mirr is equal to this minus 1 so what we are getting is that MIR is nothing but 12.48%. Now, if you were to do using a function also, let's try values, finance rate, reinvestment rate. And if I just increase the decimal places, it comes to be exactly what we calculated manually, right? But the reason why I explained you manually, right, rather than the function is so that you understand what exactly we're doing. All you're trying to do is you're trying to take the future value of these cash flows, right, individually, right, at the reinvestment rate, right, and then what you're trying to do is you're trying to calculate the summation of this, and then you're saying, okay, if this is the future value of these cash flows, right, at not the IRR, but at a different reinvestment rate, 
and what would be the rate of return if 1000 were to turn to that and that's exactly what you did out here if you want to see this mathematically so if you see this mathematically you see that the formula is nothing but mirr raised to this is exactly what we did right the future value of cash flow positive cash flow and present value of negative cash flow raised to n and if you solve for uh, this function entirely uh, manually you would get the modified improvement so i hope that helped it's a very simple explanation i hope that you can use this in your future endeavors in interviews wherever you attend